Hi, it's been a while. Welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we will be sharing about our top 10 best reno decisions. But before we get started, <clears throat> this episode is brought to you by Home Trust. Home Trust provides hundreds of unbiased reviews and design inspirations from the best interior designers in Singapore. If you are looking for an interior designer, simply head on to hometrust.sg, filter according to your house type, budget, and even the ideal theme of your dream home, and now you are good to go. Enjoy a holistic view of thousands of interior designers with their respective ratings and reviews to find the one that fits the bill. If you require any inspiration or advice, click on the articles and guides to find out more. Alternatively, tap on to the community of homeowners to get your questions answered on the forum. So, visit their website now at www.hometrust.sg or click through the link in the description box down below. Starting with the toilet, the first thing we wanted to talk about is our step-down shower instead of having a cup. Personally, we think this design is safer, you know, in a sense it's harder to trip over it and looks better since it's less obvious. If you're concerned about having to raise the entire bathroom just to achieve this look, don't be. Honestly, it isn't obvious. Next up on the list are storage mirrors, which are pretty common but very useful in hiding all that clutter as you can see. Next are this Bandor shower screen which I insisted on having and my ID had to look high and low for it. We think it adds so much more character than just the traditional shower screen. No matter how I try, ooh, but we just wanted to point out that this is purely for aesthetics only because it is pretty hard to clean, especially the overlapping areas. However, no regrets since nobody really showers here anyway. Nyx has got to be opting for darker tiles in the master, which is the only toilet we use for shower. We can't imagine otherwise. Just 4 months in and we already had to scrub the floors multiple times because of stains. And then we have the false walls to hide those ugly TV wires. So how it works is that there is a hole behind the TV where they drop the TV wires and then these wires are accessible via the TV console below. Can you see that black wire hole cover? Yep, that's where they will pull out those wires. We think this is really a small detail that makes a huge difference. But since you came around, Moving on to the positioning of the sockets and switches. Here's one example of how we were intentional in making the switch at the dry pantry less apparent by hiding it under the cabinet so it doesn't destroy the look of our backsplash. So the set of sockets you see beside the switch were a mistake, but since the holes were already open, we decided to just install the socket and make it seem, you know, intentional. But the ideal placement of the sockets should be in the halfway height, so that when you plug your appliances, you wouldn't see a long string of wire hanging. Plus, the appliances sort of helps you cover the sockets as well. We also did the same in the kitchen, and as you can see, although the appliance was plugged in, you don't see the ugly wires at all. Continuing on the topic of socket positioning, we also hide the TV sockets behind the TV so it's concealed. Did the same for our master too. Next, of course, catering for lots of storage. As you can tell from our wet kitchen, we even went for double tier cabinets, but mainly for aesthetics. Did the same for the dry pantry. Could it have been prettier with just an open shelf? Likely, yes but we were too concerned about the dust and the amount of cleaning required. 
Same goes to the bay window, which has a bunch of additional storage, which is now full by the way. Up next, floor skirting. So we have seen some houses that decided to do away with skirting. Looks pretty nice, kinda elongates the wall. But the skirting has been so helpful in preventing pain trip-offs, especially when you are vacuuming and you accidentally hit the wall. We got to know this because there are certain areas of our house that doesn't have the skirting. Thankfully, these areas are minimal. Alright, moving on to our concealable mirror in the walk-in. We think having this design is pretty great because where necessary, we can keep the mirror and easily repurpose this room as a study. And finally, our best decision, which was to have a separate wet and dry kitchen accessible via this concealed door design. Well, we did this so that when we do heavy cooking, although not often at all, we can keep the fumes within the wet kitchen so that the living smells fresh as always. On top of that, since the service yard is together with the wet kitchen, it also allows us to tuck away all the ugly laundry when guest comes over. I mean, nobody needs to see them. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to our next episode. Sometimes it shows, it shows, it shows